All right, we're taking a, I'm taking a quick second to tune here. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Jay Saros off of his uh, his album Tripping and Running. That came out in 2009. And um, it was uh, a song called Words. And uh, we heard a little bit um, about words. And uh, we're actually going to play a tune from Tripping and Running live in the studio. We're going to play Tripping right and now. Running here. Um title track i'm just taking a second to tune olivia told me something great one time she said you know jay someone told me that tuning is like aircraft maintenance and that it's always a good idea and i am a firm believer in that i would say it's a good idea too <laughs> and um uh, you mentioned the grateful dead earlier and uh we're gonna be playing some grateful dead tonight at 10 p.m we play uh we're gonna play a whole set from 1982 Ooh. and uh they were yeah. big for just letting the band, letting the audience get a um, the sound check, and that 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 was one of the things that they're known for is doing their little tuning thing right at the beginning there. Yeah, and we're doing this right now. Is this how's this sounding in there to you? Sounds good to me. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Well, it seems I'm ready when you are. All right. And uh, Jay, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, title track from uh, Tripping and Running? Title track, Tripping and Running. Um, living in Burlington, Vermont, for a while, and. Um, I was really super into Michael Hedges at this point and drawing a lot of inspiration from him. And I, I had this, this one room. I had a futon pad on the floor with pretty much nothing in it. And um, I just used to sit down and, and play and try and emulate him. I was in a, a band called um, The Effective Dose. They're now called Incarnations of Ed, I believe. They're, they're going strong in Boston. Mm -hmm. um, but they, they play with a lot of people in the jam scene. Um, but I was working with those guys, and I was always, you know, playing my acoustic music because we didn't really do that as a band too much. Um, but this was kind of one of the songs that inspired me to, like I said before, I wasn't singing too much, so I wanted a strong acoustic piece that I could play out. That um, you know, so if every time you take an instrument away from a performance, it becomes you need to make the instruments left a little bit stronger, I think. You know, sometimes you go see a, a full eight-piece band play, and it's a whole bunch of people doing really simple things, and what an impact it has. And then you subtract three of those members, and each member needs to step it up a little bit. So this was kind of a song that I wrote for a challenge for myself and to kind of um, get my foot into the door of performing solo without having the confidence to really sing at that point. Um, so it's called Tripping and Running. And one thing... Uh, while you're playing this, if listeners online they want to go check out Jay's website, uh, go to jsarosmusic.com. But you got to do one thing: you got to spell it right. Uh, <laughs> P S A R O S music.com. J P S A R O S music. Uh, dot com and uh, you can get you can find out how to get the album there and you can see all your concert dates you got any good dates you want to uh, plug right now yeah actually April 1st at my house lounge in Quincy this is a real I think one of the coolest spots in Quincy to go see live music um, it's just this great little vibe in there it can be a listening room it can be a complete party um, depending on the night but I'm doing a, a thing called song songwriters in the round on April 1st day it's songwriters fooling around and it's uh, myself, uh, a woman named Patty DeRosa, who's worked with uh, several talented artists such as Ante Duvacott, um, Vance Gilbert, and also another um, up-and-comer, this, this guy, Greg Loftus, who's um, a mass native as well. Um, so that's April 1st, 8 p.m. It, it's five bucks at the door, and we're hoping to have a real, real good night out of that one, too. Cool. So Jay Saros on the Organic Jam right now is going to play a uh, title track from Chipping and Running.
Very nice Jay, uh, job there, Jay. <laughs> Thanks, man. Loving the uh, loving the tune. And um, now I can I can totally see how um, how how much you like Keller Williams by that tune. That's that's like his his style of that picking that really really fast paced yeah. um, uh, style right there. Now, um, so 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 is that complicated to do as a musician and uh, learn learning? Because um, because I, I know he's a very very advanced guitarist and he does things that uh, most folks um, are incapable of doing. Now is 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 it was it was it tough to really um, come up with that style or? Um, well, like I was saying before, sometimes things just kind of come to you mm -hmm. and they they fall out out of you. And I was very fortunate with that, where I sat down, and I was I got the alternate tuning things from listening to Michael Hedges. Like, um, Aerial boundaries is what he does, and it's a lot of D bass tuning. So I was like, oh, let's play around with the D tuning, and then listening to Keller. Uh, Michael Hedges does a lot of the tapping, a little bit more finesse, not mm -hmm. quite as quick. Each note rings a little longer with his playing, but Keller has that kind of up-tempo beat to it. Um, but I, I think I got lucky with this one because I sat down and, and everything kind of clicked towards me. Um, I've played this song like, thousands of times at this point, um, and sometimes it means a lot to me. And I'm like, wow, like, I'm really happy I have this song. Other times it gets a little old playing it a lot. Um, so I guess it's kind of tough for me right now to say was it was it difficult or not. Um, there's such a such a pattern to it. It's almost I like to think of it as, as a rut, not a bad rut or a good rut. But once you fall into the rut, you just go. Um, and like anything, once it's rehearsed enough, it becomes second nature. And um, if I were to try and write or play this song two years into playing guitar, I think the dexterity might not be there. Um, but w when I wrote it, I was you know, six years, seven years in, um, and I was playing all the time, and I was developing a good understanding for the instrument. Um, so I, I, if, if I sat down with someone and taught it to them, it wouldn't be a very incredibly difficult piece. I think a lot of people would be surprised at how easily it could be learned. Um, it's, it's very show PC when, when you see it. Um, but like I said, I feel very fortunate to have this song because a lot of people do enjoy it. And um, I, I owe a lot of the things I'm doing with music today to that song. So, All right. Hey, are you ready for the debut of Mountainside? I'm ready. On Power 88 Let's and do it. the world on radio. Let's do it. This is from Tripping and Running. And uh, this is uh, track number eight on Tripping and Running. And the name of the tune is Mountainside. Um, now, anything you, uh, you uh, want to say about Mountainside, the recording, the writing, um, because this is the debut. We have to give the good impression here. The good impression. Um, <laughs> well, I, I work with a, a guy who does all the audio engineering and the drummer. His name's Tony Semino. He's up at uh, Mojo Music Studios in uh, Easton, New Hampshire. And um, he's just a great dude. And a lot of times when, it, when I had Mountainside, I had the, the, initial mel the initial melody to it and the chords. And a lot of times Tony kind of says, oh, no, 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 let's take a step back here. And he plays the drum and he says, what do you think about this? And he loves kind of reggae stuff. And he was like, can you play kind of a, a little bit of a reggae backbone to it? Um, so it's not a reggae song, but it has a little bit of that flair. Um, it's a love song, like many guys with acoustic guitars tend to write. <laughs> um, but it's grown, grown on me. I, I really enjoyed this song, and that's kind of why I was hoping it would get played today because no, no one's played it so far and uh, I think this song you know uh, out of some of the other songs on the CD deserves that recognition I sure think so too <laughs> and uh, it's time um, Mountainside on Pub Power 88's Organic Jam uh, when we get back from playing Mountainside Jay's going to talk about his upcoming album which is coming out in the month of May um, it's going for uh, it's going to be going. You said for, it's going to be going for uh, pressing on the first of April, which is only a couple days coming away. Yeah, I'm nervous. <laughs> Nothing to be nervous about. You've done this before, right? I've done this before, but this time, like, there's a deadline this time, mm -hmm. and you know, it's a self-imposed deadline. But I, I see the chain of events that follows. Olivia and I are going on tour here um, for three months in the summer, and we need something to sell. <laughs> 
<laughs> any any venues that you're booked at that you uh, y- you're really can't wait to get to, and um, something that you've been thinking about for a while, or any any city specific cities maybe that you might be playing in the future, or well, I'd like to have Olivia tell you about her folks' place. I'm really excited to go there. All right, oh gosh, you want to talk about it now or what? after Mountainside? Let's t- oh, it's up to Mike. What we can talk about it now. Let's, let's talk let's about go it. For it. Yeah. Well. Um, the truth is that my folks own a cowboy chuck wagon supper show out in the northwest mm-hmm. in a little town called Liberty Lake, Washington. And they do live cowboy music and serve you up some of the best barbecue in the United States, as far as I'm concerned. I haven't eaten every ounce of barbecue in the United States, but I am pretty biased. Um, and uh, it's, it's a really great show and a really good meal. It's all you can eat until you're sick or it's gone, whichever comes first. And we get to play there. <laughs> and we get to play there. <laughs> That's going to be fun. So this is in April you're playing there or May? This is in June. June, okay, yeah. okay. So, so the tour is in June. All right. Yeah, well, well the tour starts in May. Um, it kicks off at the Pennsylvania Brewing Company in Pittsburgh hmm? um, and then takes us pretty much we're following Route 66. Um, but that's where I, I know we're both definitely really looking forward to playing there. Um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting back to Santa Fe. Last year I did a summer tour in uh, this one venue called Corazon in Santa Fe, New Mexico. It was just awesome. Mm-hmm. Had a blast there, a good crowd. And then um, we had a really good show in West Yellowstone, of all places, at the Pinecone Playhouse. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't booked there yet. We're trying to decide if it fits our route with gas prices going through the roof and everything we're, we're trying mm-hmm. to keep things you know straight lined as possible um last year we we kind of did the country but we went up down up down back left right forward up down and back again so the less economical route yes all exactly. over the place the, the least economical route <laughs> <laughs> so so you're going um you're going with the trend of the gas prices these these days you're going to have to go go take it easy and go slow on the highway uh. I think everyone's going with the trend of the gas prices these days. Yeah. Until we get to Kansas. Kansas, the, the highway's out there. I don't know if you've ever been there, but, man, you can go 80 miles per hour. So, of course, we're, we're doing 90 miles per hour. And <laughs> there's, these part, there's these parts of these highways <laughs> where it's, it goes on forever, and there's two lanes. You know, one lane of traffic's coming at you. You're going the other way. And you've got these truckers who that's, who have been on the road for days. And I just remember going by these trucks with no room to spare on either side, and we think we're going fast, but these guys are going even faster. Every time the truck would come by, the wind, if you had your window open, felt like a good smack across the face. And after a while, I was with my buddy, uh, my buddy Mando Rando at this point, and we, we, we were making a thing out of it. We put the window down, we get all excited because you're going through the corn <laughs> and there's nothing. Here it comes, here it comes, and the truck would come by and the whole thing would shake from the wind. And that made me way too excited, but I'm looking forward for that again. <laughs> there is reason to get excited because this is this is this is something. This is your life. You're coming up. You're doing this crazy tour in the summer, and um, and it's it's definitely something to get really excited about. And I'm with you there. Well, I'm glad you're sharing my enthusiasm. And uh, maybe over the summer uh, we can do a call in from one of your tour uh, stops. You got to check in with us. That would be so cool. You, you got to we got to we got to do something like that. Hey, everybody, it's Mountainside. Uh, first time on the radio. I know I said this about 10 minutes ago, but we're going to get it going right now. Mountainside uh, uh, from tripping and running. Jay Saros.